Hey guys, what's going on? Tom here with another tutorial type video and in this one uh, we're going to be doing displacement maps which are very useful for making like ripples, shock waves, uh, water movement. It kind of It's kind of a way to show energy uh, pretty much and it's a actually a pretty simple effect but not many people use it or actually know how to use it. There's a lot of confusion about it and one thing before I actually uh, start teaching you guys is there's there's kind of a storm with lightning going on or thunder I guess going on out there so hopefully that doesn't get in the way of the audio but if it does uh, please excuse it you know lightning or thunder whichever one it is does its thing so uh, let's get right to it we'll make a new composition and you see we have this uh, still picture of a very nice landscape and what, what we're going to do is we're going to add a displacement map to it and we'll have like a circle shockwave kind of expand. Like um, if you're shooting a pistol, uh, some people might add it. Um, there, there's a lot of effects that use it, but uh, let's just uh, start off by making a solid. Um, we'll call it displacement. Um, and then make sure that it's uh, pure white. Uh, that's very important because we're going to use a luminance channel to actually do this. Uh, meaning to use our displacement map. So we'll use values of like black, gray, and white. Uh, white being the top, black being the bottom, gray being uh, 50%. And if that doesn't make sense, it will in just a moment. So uh, take your layer, uh, pre-compose it, and call it uh, displacement map. And then you can open up that composition. Okay, this is where we're actually going to make our uh, displacement map. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a elliptical mask. And I'm also going to enable the uh, action safe. Uh, so I can see where the center is. Okay, just get the center and then make... Oh wait, whoops, make sure you actually have your layer selected, obviously. And then... God damn it. And then make an elliptical mask. Bam. Lots of trouble to go through, but whatever. There you go. You have your mask. And then you can take that mask and duplicate it and set the other one uh, to subtract. So you see you have this uh, very uh, thin white line because there's a mask here. And then the same one, but subtracting. So it's pretty much negating itself. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to keyframe uh, these uh, masks. So it looks like a ring is kind of coming out of it. And you see if we change the um, expansion here, it um, kind of messes it up. Uh, what we want is to go inside. So uh, set a keyframe and then set it to like a negative 500. Maybe just keep going until it's like a full circle. So negative 550. Yeah, that, that will do it. And then go to your last frame or wherever you want and then set it back to zero because that's where it originally was. Now you see we kind of have this thing growing larger into the abyss, I guess. And we're also going to keyframe uh, this mask, and we're going to lower it down to negative 520 or so. Uh, we want a little leeway. And then on, at the last frame, set it to 0. So now you see we have this uh, ring looks pretty good um if you want to change the look of it uh, go to your first keyframe and then uh add to it or subtract to it so if you add to it you know you get a bigger ring and you see it kind of gets smaller as it goes on you can also change that by changing uh this value um if you want but i'm not going to do that because i like the way it looks now okay good now, th this is enough already, but just to kind of show you the contrast, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another solid, and it will be a 50% gray, or I call it a perfect gray. And you can now see we have this transparent white ring kind of growing and then disappearing, which is what we want. Uh, you can do different shapes, different patterns, but this is the one we're doing right now. So... Here we go. If we go back to our composition, we have this. So what I'm gonna do it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, disable this layer so we don't see it. And that's very important. It won't work if you actually see it. Also, put it under. It's not really important. Okay. Now go to your uh, picture and then add a displacement map effect. 
Okay, sweet. So you see, initially it kind of screws up the picture. I'm going to show you the frame. Disabled, enabled. So you see it kind of messes it up. But that's because it's using um, the picture as a displacement. And you see if I increase the displacement there, it messes it up. You can do vertical, horizontal. But what we want to do is actually set our displacement map to the right one. So go to displacement map layer and set it to displacement map. Awesome, and you see it kind of fixed itself. And now if we play the footage, ba -ba -bum, it's kind of hard to see through YouTube, I would assume, but I'll zoom in. You see we kind of have this ring of uh, displacement. And it, it follows our uh, composition exactly. You see it kind of thins out. I mean, it, you should watch this video in a 1080p as long as I provide it, so it's actually easier to see, but... There you go. And if you kind of want to affect it even more, uh, what I'm going to do is you can actually increase uh, the vertical and horizontal displacement from 5 to like 10. Bam. So you now see it's a more visible ring. You can go crazy. You can go like 20, which will be really easy to see on YouTube, hopefully. Bam. Personally, I think something like 7 or 8 looks the best for most effects like gunshots energy uh, you don't want to go crazy with it and also you can change the um the settings for the displacement i like to keep it on luminance because that's what we're doing we're using a luminance channel being black to gray to white um if you want to displace like only the greens you can do that set it to green uh, you can displace based off saturation uh, you can do full, which also works, but uh, you can actually have a lot of uh, customizability with this. And that is actually uh, pretty cool. So, I mean, that's already the effect, but I'm going to show you another example for what you can do with it. So, let's just delete uh, this right here. And I'm going to add a reference picture in here. We're going to delete it after we're done. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new white solid again make sure it's white if that's what you want to do and this will also be called displace and what i'm going to do is i'm going to mask off a little bit of this water area i mean you probably want to do a cleaner job but there we go uh, let's enable this layer and you see we got this some um, white uh, solid along the water and then you can add something random like a fractal noise, which is actually pretty good because it goes black to white. Um, at least by default, it goes to that. Uh, we can increase the contrast to 250, uh, so it's easier to see. And then I'm also going to keyframe the evolution time times 150. Basically, that will uh, change the value of the evolution by 150 every second. There we go. So you see we have this uh, moving fractal. Uh, you don't have to use a command. You can just keyframe it. Uh, whatever floats your boat, really. Bam. And then just delete your uh, picture. That was just reference. So there we go. And since it's a bit sharp, we can also feather out the mask by like 20. Awesome. And you see now if I go back to my uh, main composition, it still has displacement map chosen. So basically what that will do is now if we play it, you see the water is kind of rippling. Uh, let me zoom in a bit. The water is rippling. Um, obviously you want to keyframe your evolution in a way where it looks realistic. So you, you kind of have moving reflections and stuff and it's only affecting that area. Obviously you do have a little problem here because there isn't enough frame, so it's going to have to crop out this edge over here, which is why there's a bit of black, because it's actually just displacing the thing. So what you can do if you want to hide that is just select both layers, and then uh, increase the scale by like 110% should be good. So you're still getting the displacement of the water, but uh, none of the problems on the side. And if you want to get like really good, you can just mask off this whole like lake area. Obviously you're gonna have a few problems with this uh, flower, but you can always uh, mask that out as well. I mean, it's it's a really cool effect. I mean, you could even like change the clouds. You gotta think creatively with this. Um, 
if you have like a laser beam add a displacement map to it it only takes like uh, 10 seconds and it kind of like warps your footage around it like warping around light it so yeah I mean hope I think this was a pretty fast tutorial let's see our timer okay not bad um so hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial um if you didn't understand uh, either message me or uh, watch again I guess that works um hopefully you guys enjoyed and the uh, fume effects explosion tutorial uh, will be coming soon for the guys who've been uh, anticipating that if that's a thing it's gonna it's gonna be really cool explosions are really awesome so look forward to that guys hopefully you guys enjoyed displacement maps um, they're really awesome I'd recommend uh, using them trying them out uh, putting them in your projects or tests or whatever um, but yeah guys that's my time uh, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.